What's up everybody? We are Alien Ant Farm and these are our marquee memories. Back in the 90s, we were just kids going to a lot of shows. We used to kind of just practically live at the Hollywood Palladium. Going to those shows made me and my friends want to become like those guys up on stage. And one show in particular I went to there was Alice in Chains and their videos, you know, everybody got kind of used to seeing Lane Staley with his lovely blonde dreadlocks swinging them to and fro. We're at the show, right? And he comes out and he's got a hat on and his dreadlocks are hanging out it's and stuff. A hat, right? I think, yeah, I was wearing a Slayer hat. They get maybe three or four songs in and mid song, he pulls the hat off and all of his dreads come off with it. And he's totally just buzzed head. And he just chucks the hat out into the crowd. And like, I just remember the crowd just raging, like the crowd lost their minds at something so minuscule, but like really profound. And they just blew up. I was just like, wow, the power of the crowd got me eventually, you know? And it was a cool way to kind of reveal your haircut. Saw Edie Brickell probably around 2006 at the Roxy in Los Angeles. I felt bad, but after about 20 minutes, I had to tell the woman behind me to stop singing so loudly because it's not the loudest music. I remember a lot of feeling guilty about that. I've just been in love with her since I heard her maybe when I was about 10, 11 years old. We even talked about her singing on our, uh, on our second record. And I feel like I kind of kiboshed it because we were like riding on the coattails of Michael Jackson in some weird way. And I didn't want a song to blow up with Edie on it. And I regret it every day now that we didn't do that. I went to see Ozzy at the Irvine Meadows Amphitheater. We went, I was about 14 years old and my grandmother, she took me, my friend Keith and my friend Aaron, she dropped us off there. We went and found like a ticket scalper. We got some tickets. Parents don't do that anymore, huh? Just like drop their kids off. I mean, 14 years old is like, we had some some money that she gave us and then uh, found these tickets and we went to the lawn. I've never been to a rock concert. I just like see this stuff on like MTV and I was just like blown away. And so we're watching and they had like come out and there's like doing some kind of medley of this and that. And uh, Steven Adler and Slash came out and joined them. It's like right at the height of, of uh, Appetite for Destruction and all that. And Guns N' Roses was my favorite band at the time. And I was just like blown away. I couldn't believe this was happening in front of my like, very own eyes. Came back home and the next day we we're sitting there kind of just like reliving it all. And my friends, like one of them swore that he played Iron Man like twice. And we're like, wait, no. <laughs> Did you play Iron Man? Oh, Iron, played Iron Man twice. Iron Man. Yeah, Iron right. Man. Iron Man. <laughs> Back in 2002, I was a young lad in Washington, D.C., and I went to the HFS Smith's Nutcracker at MCI Center. I went there to see Queens of the Stone Age and The Vines and Coldplay and Boxcar Racer. But about halfway during the show, James Brown came out for, as a surprise guest. He did Get On Up, he did I Feel Good, and he did the whole the whole cape where the person comes out after he falls down, puts the cape on him, he throws it Bobby off. Bobby Bird. Bobby Bird. Did the Bobby Bird. When, when James Brown came out, he was on fire. Like he was just doing all the dance moves. Just really inspiring to see the guy. That ain't right. At that age, doing his thing. Thanks for listening to our Marquee Memories. Make sure to catch us on tour to make some of your own.